Okay, today's lecture is about D2 integral for a continuous strategy. So remember that we know how to do it for a simple process. It's just multiplying the value of the strategy at the beginning of the interval times the Brian increment on that interval, and we sum that up. So essentially modifying the Brian increment as we go. Now, what we want is to do that when the strategy actually changes over time, uh, you know, maybe at every time. So here's the setup. So the strategy we want, we always want it to be adapted. That means XS is FS measurable. And F here is the information of the Brian motion, underlying Brian motion. So it's the Brian filtration. And the idea here is I don't want the strategy to depend on the future. So it only depends on the past, okay? Exactly like an investing strategy without inside information. Um, we want the strategy to be continuous, so the paths are continuous. You can adapt that. For example, the discrete strategy, the simple process was not continuous, was fine. So this can be relaxed, but let's just stick to it for the moment. And the other uh, condition we need is that when I integrate the expectation of the strategy square is finite. Why do I want that? Because it, um, eventually this is going to become the variance. So I want this process to have a finite variance. So we call this uh, space, just for notation L2C, the space of continuous strategy with a finite uh, variance. Here's some example. So anytime you take uh, so take the Brian motion as the strategy. So the integral here would be the integral from zero to t, bs dbs. Okay. So what does that mean? Again, think in terms of investing strategy. So I have the Brian motion, which is my uh, price of a stock, say, and what I put in play at every time is actually the value of that asset. It's a strange strategy, but that's what it is. Okay, so that's the meaning of the integral of BS dBS. So this is obviously adapted, is a function of Brian motion at every time. It is a continuous path, Brian motion is continuous, and if you do the calculation, we'll do that later. This is finite. I could take uh, the square of Brian motion, and you can check that you also have this requirement. In fact, any continuous function of Brian motion will satisfy that assuming that you have this condition, okay? So the continuous function of Brian motion shouldn't be too bad. Uh, eventually, I will give an example of that. Okay. Okay, so once we have that, what's the theorem? Now, I'm going to present the theorem. I won't do the proof. It's a sketch of the proof in the notes, if you are interested. But what is important for us is the property that we get. So I have a continuous strategy in L2C. Then I can define the process, which is the integral of x dBU. The theorem says that this process exists, and it has the following properties. So it's not clear, again, that this exists. This is not usual integral, all right? This is just a notation. And this process has three important properties. That's what we, matters for us. They're linear. So if I integrate a linear combination of a strategy, it's just the sum of the integral. This process is a continuous martingale, exactly like Brian motion. And on top of that, I can compute uh, statistics of uh, this process, of this random variable. For example, the mean is always zero. The variance is given, the variance of the random variable at time s is given by integrating from zero to s the expectation of the strategy du. So that's just the usual Riemann integral. And on top of that, you can compute covariances, okay? So you can look at covariances between two times. So the uh, value of the process at time s and s prime. What's the covariance of that? The mean is zero, remember. is the integral from zero to the minimum of s and s prime of the expectation of the strategy square. So if s is equal to s prime, this is simply the variance, and I recover the formula for the variance up there. Um, so this should not be new in some ways. So I have the minimum between S and S prime. 
Remember that if I integrate the strategy, which is just one all the time, so every increment is multiplied by one, what I get is just Brian motion. And so this is just the covariance of Brian motion, which I know would be the minimum in between S and S prime. And this is what I get here if I integrate the square of the strategy, which just becomes one. So I can compute the variance between covariance between two processes, and I was, uh, sorry, between two times, and I also can compute covariances between two integrals built on the same Brian motion with two different set strategies, x and y. And so what's the formula? It's the integral from 0 to s of the expectation of x, u, y, u, and I integrate over du. I'll show later why, where this comes from, just from the Ito's isometry. It's a consequence of the Ito's isometry. I should write that. It's not a new formula. It's Ito's isometry. OK, so I can compute many things. That's the point of stochastic calculus. Is you can compute things now. All right, so let's do an example. And you'll see, I think now it starts to get a bit easier, the computation are made easier by all these nice results. So let's do the example from the notes. It's example 5.2, I just copied here. So I take the process BS and BS squared. Those are my strategies. And I define the integral of BS dBS from 0 to T and the integral from 0 to T of BS squared dBS. Note that the process BS and BS squared, they are in L2C, so BS is continuous. It's adapted, of course, and if we'll see that uh, the variance is finite of the integral, and same thing for BS squared, okay? Um, all right. So we have these two processes, they're well-defined. Now I can compute things, so their means are zero, both of them, because they're both a well-defined Eto integral, and I can uh, compute the uh, variance by isometry expectation of the first integral is the integral from 0 to t of the expectation of bs squared ds, a normal integral. Now, I know what the expectation of bs squared. That's simply, so I guess I did the calculation here. So I know what's the expectation of bs squared, just s. So I integrate s ds. So you see we're back to a very, our familiar integral. It's the Riemann integral. And so the variance of this is t squared over 2. For the second integral, the variance is the square of the strategy, which is now BS4, expectation of that. I know what's the fourth Mormon of a normal. It's three times the variance square, so it's 3S squared in this case. Again, back to a Riemann integral. I know how to integrate that. It's like calculus 101. It's just T cubed. So I have the variance between uh, the variance for each of those. I can even compute the covariance. They're built on the same brand motion, so they might be correlated, they might not be correlated, or, or they might be uh, uncorrelated. They might be dependent or independent. They're built on the same source of randomness. So let's compute the covariance. It turns out that the covariance by Ito's isometry is the integral from 0 to t, expectation of the product of these two strategies, bs times bs squared. That's the third moment of a Gaussian, any odd moment must be zero for a normal zero, uh, a normal would mean zero, and therefore this is zero. Now they're uncorrelated, but they're not independent, okay? So you can think of it a little bit about why they're not independent. Uh, I'll say more about this uh, later, all right? So you might think that these two processes are gauche, and actually they're not. They're not. So I give some sufficient condition for a process to be gauche a bit later. All right. So at this point, we know how to compute mean, variance, and covariance of these processes. Here's a nice image from the notes. That's the simulation of the second process as T uh, evolve. So it should be a continuous martingale. So the path they look continuous, and the martingale property you can see again by the fact that you're essentially constant on average. All right, so this is for the theorem. So I'll just make a little remark on the proof. Again, if you want to see more, look at the notes. So this object, this random variable, 
for fixed t that we uh, constructed, it's actually a random variable, and it's a limit in the sense of L2 of a sequence of random variable. And the sequence you take is a sequence of simple processes, simple strategy that in some sense approximate x, okay? And you know that for, you know the meaning of the integral, like in Riemann sum, you know the meaning of this integral when it's discrete, it's uh, this uh, nice sum where the increments are modulated. So it's an L2 limit of uh, integral of simple processes. So it seems quite abstract because, okay, it's a limit, it's a limit of a random variable, but what else do I know? Well, I know all the properties we just saw, and those are the important ones. And this is not new to stochastic calculus. I just want to point that out, that if when you do Riemann integral, for example, the integral of e minus y squared over 2, this is very abstract. It's a limit of Riemann sum of this function, and I don't have a closed form for it. Okay, But what I know is the properties of this guy, and we do the same thing as stochastic calculus. Now, if we just go a step ahead of ourselves, what we do in section 5.3 is the fundamental theorem of stochastic calculus. Now, in some cases, in regular ca calculus, the integral can be made concrete. That is, you have an antiderivative. That's what the fundamental theorem of calculus relates the integral to the derivative. We have the same thing in stochastic calculus. That is, I can sometimes make this abstract limit concrete in some cases, and this is the content of Ito's formula. All right? So, Yes, it's an abstract definition. It's a limit of a uh, random variable, this integral. But the important thing is we know its properties, so we can compute things. And in some cases, as we'll, as we'll see in section 5.3, these uh, integrals can actually be uh, made more explicit. All right. Now let me go back to the covariance uh, formula. And the point here is that the Ito's isometry gives you the covariance formula. So what does that mean in an isometry? Isometry means iso is for same in Greek and metry is measure. So it turns out that if you have the same distance, if you wish, it also gives you the same inner product. And to see that, so where the covariance formula comes from, just using the variance formula, compute the variance of the integral of x plus y dB. If I compute that, on one hand, what I can do is actually um, use the linearity of the integral. So this is the integral of x plus the integral of y. And so I have the square of two integrals, and I expand the square. So I'll get the square of the first integral plus the square of the second one plus the mixed term, which is the covariance between the two integrals. That's what I want. So that's on one hand. So Ito's isometry gives you, for the first one, just the integral of uh, the strategy square for both. OK. And on the other hand, instead of actually using the linearity of the integral, I can just use the isometry directly on the strategy x plus y. So it tells isometry gives me that 0t, but this is equal to the integral on 0t of the expectation of the strategy square. Now expand the square now this way. You're going to have e of x squared plus e of y squared plus the mixed term. But e of x squared is this term. If the y squared is this term, so I have perfect cancellation. So the mixed term must be equal. And so the mixed term on this side is this, and the mixed term on this side is this, and then you get the covariance formula. All right? So any time is actually a general fact that if you are in a, in a space with an inner product and you know that the vectors have the same length, then they must have the same inner product. All right. So we know to compute variance, covariance for different times and, and processes, and the mean's always zero. What about knowing more about the distribution of this uh, limit of this random variable? Well, you can actually, depends on, on the cases, but you can actually get uh, more information on this. And the simplest case, which is very important for us, in the, is the case where it's Gaussian. So here's a sufficient condition for uh, this uh, variable to be Gaussian. Well, take x, the strategy, which is non-random, okay? It doesn't depend on the path. It just depends on time. 
Okay, for example, xs is s squared. Okay, so every time s, I put in s squared. It's a weird strategy. Again, it doesn't depend on the information. It just depends on time. Then in that case, the random variable is always Gaussian. Okay? So in fact, you know all the distribution in that case because you have the variance, the covariance, the mean, and you know it's Gaussian, so you know the whole distribution. Okay, so there's more on the proof of that, but the point here is that uh, it's not surprising because if you take a simple process, so we know everything about simple processes. So all the properties, if they're true for simple processes, they essentially lift to the limit. And here, if I look at the integral of a simple process, which is just the sum over the increments, um, then this is, if x is not random, what I get is a sum of Brana increments, okay? And I know that any linear combination of uh, jointly Gaussian random variables, that's the case for increments, remain Gaussian, okay? So it remains Gaussian in this case. If x is not random, then it might not be true. Uh, sorry, if x is random, then it might not be true. 